I personally believe to truly appreciate a character, you need to pay attention to the small things they do in the narrative and not just the super hype, impactful moments that are emphasized. I have a lot of respect for how CU has handled Urek Mazino thus far. There is obviously more to come, but we need to speak on his greatness today. Now, I'm not a power scaler. However, it would be dishonest to talk about the Ray Barracuda without mentioning his overwhelming might. So for once, I'll slap the meathead label on my enormous forehead and do some slight power scaling. So let's do this, babies. For those who don't really read the blog post, let me start with some things you might not be aware of. A barracuda is a type of white steel eel that lives in the tower and is the most belligerent and truculent white steel eel the tower has. Urek got his sorbriquet based off of this animal, the Ray Barracuda, due to the way in which he fights as he can launch Shinsu at light speed. He followed rank 1, Phantominium into the tower, and completed the climb in less than 50 years, the fastest of all time to date, even quicker than the king of the tower himself, Jihad. On the 100th floor, when he was still a regular, he took Ariahan's test where he needed to survive his attacks for 10 minutes. But instead, Urek matched him evenly for those 10 minutes, and Ariahan admitted Urek was far superior to him. He upset the long, stagnant rankings by becoming fourth overall, but dissatisfied with being lower than Phantom Minium, who is an Axis, mind you, Urek threatened Robert Isen to raise his rank after breaking into the ranking administration office, but went home salty when he was told convincingly without pause that he would not be victorious should he fight Phantom Minium. The tower actually teased him a bit about this after that ordeal. Last thing before we hop into the Flower of Zagania art when we meet him is that Yuri's weapon, Kranos, once belonged to a high ranker named Quadrado who traveled with the Ten Great Warriors on the Great Pilgrimage. At some point, Urek fought him, defeated him, took Kranos for him, and gave it to Yuri. Now, early in Season 2, we are introduced to him in the Flower of Zagania where he had effortlessly been killing a surplus of rankers that kept getting sent to stop him. He toys with the regulars and boasts to even stop him with a lighthouse for a fraction of a second. You need an opera. A opera being the strongest lighthouse in the tower. There are only three of them. And that would only stop him for like a millisecond. Now, outside the creature, he low diffs two rankers. They're dead, bodied, done, and quickly immobilizes Noma. He explains that you need at least a thousand rankers so that he wouldn't be embarrassed to talk about the fight itself. Now, his best on-screen feats, even though he's never exceeded using over 10% of his power, is on the floor of death. I think some people tend to not realize that SIU is actually really, really good at showing the destructive scale of attacks. He commonly will zoom out in a panel to show the readers how devastating an attack was or how far it pushed somebody back. While he does use things like percentages and statements to convey strength, I think he actually does a much better job telling this visually. He defeated a slayer, Karaka, with 1% of his finger. He literally defeated one of, if not the strongest ranker we've seen, with a mere poke. Look at the aftermath and damage caused by this dude's index finger with less than five percent of its maximum he repels an attack that was going to hit yuri and bam look at how far he pushed hell joe back who was giving even yuri top 500 a princess some trouble he even wounded her his presence and power is immediately felt by joe hell joe and with just a 10 percent punch no Shinsu, as Heljo is not allowing it on the hell floor, he causes mass destruction to the entire floor of death, <laughs> spitting the blood and, and damaging the ground and the mountains, 
everything around him to the point I don't think people realize that the guy he came in with, Yuji, UJ, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, who is above the administrator's corpse in the sky is seeing the aftershock of a mere punch. A punch that's not even bloodlusted because he's trying to separate Hell Joe from the Red Theresa, not kill him. So he's still holding back immensely for 10%. He snaps away an attack and clears it. He just clears the fucking air around him. M moves at Hell Joe at blinding speeds and eats a beam at point, point blank range. Also, several punches that are causing the liquid behind them to shoot upwards since the punches Joe, Hell Joe is throwing are pretty hard. He eats several more attacks without any damage and mind you the entire time he let these attacks hit him since he just wanted to inject Hell Joe with the syringe to separate him from the Red Theresa. He casually fires a ball of Shinsu that decimates everything around it permanently changing and damaging the landscape of the floor of death and killing the Red Theresa. Like, he, oh my god. He even used spatial distortion without harming any organism on the floor. And Gustang exclaims he could wipe out his whole family and possibly him if he were to be upset and or angered. I'm pretty sure you all knew that he was strong, but I constantly feel like he's still being lowballed by the community. So, I thought I'd put some respect on his power. But let's talk about his character. Urek, as of right now, strikes me as an abnormality for a character of his strength and status. The trials and tribulations of the tower are extremely trying and numerous and can beat you down emotionally, physically, spiritually, and mentally. Tons of rankers, I'm sorry, regulars, just give up on the climb and those who rise above it to become rankers, advanced rankers, or high rankers with power and influence come across to me as genu genuinely arrogant, like they're just holier than thou and condescending. The narrator in the last station before the new wave starts, that little arc in the last station, the last two chapters, he puts this into perspective very well, saying that the new era is capable of swallowing up the old arrogant people quicker than you would think. And, that, and to me, the best indication of somebody of this level of status being way too arrogant or, you know, <laughs> likes to smell their own shit, is Gustang. A bug is a bug, calling people vermin. Even somebody from Gustang's family, the Popido family, says to Dorian Frog and Chion Hiha, a division commander in Jihad's empire, that they are all significant. Even himself, a family member, is unworthy to even speak Gustang's name. He's above them. He's above the order of the king. He even later calls Joe a bug that could not even reach the bottom of Rex's feet. This is the type of behavior and mindset I expect from someone of Gustang's prestige. However, Urek is far more powerful and more impressive, ranked higher than Gustang, and he isn't at all like that. He's got friends of all types from all over the tower, and he looks out for the little guy. When Viole showed courage in the face of the strongest man and wounded him while protecting Masang, he didn't all he did not at all take offense to this and say something like, oh you insolent and go back. He was genuinely impressed and interested despite knowing he was a slayer candidate. He actually took interest and said watch out for that baby slayer. Joe was not but a repairman with a dream and Urek took interest in this guy, gave him the power to achieve his goals, and that's why he was so disappointed in what became of him, opting to not kill him, but reset him back to zero so he can clear his head, be who he truly was, and start over. Urek was far more impressed with the meager repairman that did not fear him instead of the pseudo-god of the 44th floor, and I respect that he looks out for the Lutoma like that. He even bothered to greet and remember Wagnang, calling him his friend, which I think was sincere and genuine. He, he strikes me as a genuinely good guy that didn't let the tower change him into a scumbag, but that doesn't mean he won't put you down if he has to. He absolutely takes pride in his strength, and there are two main examples, I would say, that uh, support this fact, maybe three, since he is the self-proclaimed champion of the tower. He's he's shaking when he's told he can't beat Phantom Minium and he was um 
on the hell train he did actually meet with the god of guardians if you guys didn't know that although he didn't go to revolution but after quickly beating all the levels on the hidden floor his data became unstable due to his how powerful he was and this upset him so he smashed a mirror basically not rewarding him for his greatness and left behind a corrupted version of his sworn enemy that doesn't want even a sham of himself to exist even if it's just data his magnanimous personality garners great respect from men all around the tower even Kun Edwan, who wishes to fight him, but he's a female repellent, unfortunately. He loves Garum. He can't. He can actually be a little bit of a fuckboy. Uh, he has some tendencies like texting a bunch of girls like, hey, what's up? Like trying to chill. <laughs> Bad, but all in all, I think he's a great dude. I love him. I can't wait to see more of him. He was visibly distraught and moping when he couldn't reignite the passion in Joe. And to the point where he said something, I don't think he necessarily believes. And despite meeting Bam like what, twice? He looks out for him like he's his big brother. Bam has tremendous respect for Iraq. Now, lastly, he's a lot smarter than you would think. He was able to discern that Bam was using a technique that only the Tenegree family uses after just seeing it once. And was actually able to figure out that Bam was an irregular just based on a few things and gave him reassurance wrapped you know said you'll, you'll be okay it's, it's gonna be all right don't worry about it you good just keep being yourself type type shit and that he'd meet him later higher up in the tower and i just got immense respect for the character i think he's great and i can't wait to learn more about him and see him do more now lastly before i wrap this up i just wanted to mention a couple of things that i didn't really say in the video one thing was that Urek was aware of what was going on on the 20th floor with the yan family the very thing that kind of kept um elwa distraught about the flower, the jewel, and the babies, how that species was pretty much being exploited for the jewel, and Iraq kind of saved that species from that, in a sense, because now that jewel will become common by saving the babies, so that's a good thing, he did a good thing. Um, he doesn't like to hang out with Gustang and the rest of them, which I interpret as the 10 great family leaders because they all seem to have kind of uppity, high and mighty personalities, which is why he opts to hang out with people that he likes and his own group which he's the co-founder of Walk Like Sung, which I didn't really speak about because I do have an upcoming discussion about the group itself. So I didn't really want to talk about it. I want to focus on the man himself, Urek Mizono, so, Mazino, so I didn't really mention Walk Like Sung too, too much. The last thing I kind of want to say is just that um, he saw himself in Joe because the point of the group and, point, and what he wants to do is leave the tower. He wants to go back outside and... Joe wants to kind of leave the floor of death so he can kind of climb the tower. He saw himself in him. He literally says this out loud. And to me, the part where he's like, fuck it, erase everyone's memory can be interpreted in two ways. One, he's just deflated and defeated by the fact that Joe gave, gave up kind of thing. So he's like, forget about it, delete it all. Or you can see it this way, as in if Joe forgets about this whole ordeal and what happened, he would return to what he was once, the kind of starry-eyed repairman who wanted to climb the tower and get out of the hell floor. So maybe he's hoping he will restore him back to what he once was by erasing his memory of the things and mistakes that he made. That being said, thank you for listening. If you got this far, I appreciate it. Tell me in the comment section below your thoughts about Urek. Do you like him? Do you not like him? What do you expect to see from him? Anything you think that I definitely should have mentioned that I did not, whether it was a feat, character moment, whatever the case may be. His appearance, I don't know. Um, yeah, have a nice day. Yep. Cold world, but I don't wanna lose my heart, yeah. I feel like I'm good cause they left me in the dark, yeah. I got these feelings with emotion fall apart, yeah. I love you once, but I didn't play it smart, yeah.